Okay, let's talk about when I started uh, Mini Bowl Design. Now, I originally uh, was selling on eBay and I was selling the one stove open top side burner. Uh, Anti Gravity Gear was selling that same stove, same stove on his website and he didn't invent it. He got it off of a uh, off the internet and there were four or five other people on eBay that were selling exactly the same stove. So I got into it and I started selling them. Originally I was making them by hand and I believe I was selling them for four dollars a piece. That <laughs> was a lot of work. Uh, so what I did from there was I started making them on the lathe, cutting them and crimping them and doing a lot of the work right on the lathe, uh, which really sped things up. Uh, it was a real eye-opener. So I continued to sell that stove even once I started making it on the lathe. But uh, sales started to die on that, although I sold a huge amount of that stove on eBay. I mean, huge amounts. Uh, but they started to slow down, and I wanted to stay ahead of the curve. So I was looking at some stoves that uh, Don Johnson made called a Photon, and I took that idea and kind of morphed it into the original stove and come up with a stove called a Trek. Uh, and this was a very simple stove. It was simply a stove made out of a 12-ounce soda can, two of them, two 12-ounce soda, uh, soda can bottoms, one size, and then pressed together and hot roll crimped on the bottom. Uh, then it had a series of jets on the outside, and it didn't even have a rivet nut. You just had a 3 30 seconds hole for a filler hole in the middle. You just set it down, no wick, poured your fuel into the center of it. Uh, I used a, uh, an aluminum cupcake paper for primer pan, put that underneath it, put a little alcohol in it, let it to prime it, and there you were. I mean, dumb simple. No wick, no rivet nut. Just a two-piece stove, hot roll, crimped with a hole in the top, and a set of jets. And it was painted flat black. Well, uh, the, I was selling those for $5 a piece, and the demand for them, people hadn't uh, seen that many pressurized stoves, and they hadn't seen them at that lower price. So, uh, <clears throat> being the only one, like, in the world, making them in a machine shop environment, high volume, and selling them really cheap, because... I think Anti Gravity Gear was selling his for uh, like twelve dollars at the time, and I was selling mine for four or five. So uh, what I did was I bought a few of those little uh, seven by ten mini lathes, and soon I would come out in the morning and I had everything all all the dies and everything all set up, and she would just sit there and I would cut the can, rough cut the cans on a cutoff saw, rough cut a couple hundred of them and bring them in. Uh, we'd wash them, then we'd bring them into the factory, and we'd, we'd both run lathes. We both had a, a mandrel that you just slide it over and go in and cut the length, come back, pull it off, slide another one on. And I mean, we were doing like one every 15 seconds, maybe every 10 seconds, just as fast as we could do them. And we'd do uh, 200 halves. I'd do the bottom, she'd do the top, so vice versa. There's a little bit difference in length. Uh, once those were done, uh, that would pretty much take care of one day. The next day I'd come out and anneal and expand them, slide them together and hot roll crimp them. Uh, the next day I would jet them and put the hole in the top and they'd all go in a box and as I sold them I'd throw them in a mandrel and spin them in the lathe and hit them with spray paint just before they went out the door. So about every three days uh, I was making and processing about a hundred stoves, 200 parts, about a hundred stoves. So uh, right there, that was about uh, 33 a day. And they were going right out the door. I was selling them on eBay, and I also was sending them to Hong Kong. Uh, and I, was, I, I also came up with another stove called a Stealth, which was basically the same stove, but it was made out of a, a Red Bull can. Uh, same basic design, no primer wick flat black, pressurized, hole in the top deal, uh, same money, is like five bucks, and I was selling those uh, to a couple of websites, and, and making just as many of those as I was the other ones, off and on, off and on, so there were lots of days where uh, 
you know, where I'd sell 50 or 75, maybe even 100 stoves. Didn't happen every day, and it kind of came in fits and spurts. But it was crazy. And why was I successful at it when other people weren't? The only reason I can think of is uh, the stoves were made on a machine, so they were all the same, all the same length, all the same crimp. Uh, and because I was making so many of them, and so easily, uh, the price was about half of what anybody else was charging. Most people were trying to get, you know, seven or eight. I was getting four or five. Uh, so the price was low, the quality was high, and I kept coming up uh, with new designs like the Trek. Nobody was selling anything like that pressurized Trek. And it, it really caught on fast. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time with the right product and the right mindset. And I'm telling you, that was nuts. I came up with the Trek, the Stealth, the AT, and uh, the Skeddy, I think. And I got an order from uh, a, a hobby store or a backpacking store in Hong Kong, ordered 1,200 of them. And he wanted them with directions, in a bag, individually boxed. So Sue and I set out over like a month's time. We built 1,200 of those besides our regular orders and put them all in individual boxes with directions, uh, bagged, sealed up, and then put the name of the stove on the outside of the box. And then all those little 4x4 four four boxes went into bigger boxes, about 50 to a box. And then those in turn uh, went into a bigger master carton that had 300. So we had four master cartons and those went to a place in California and then from California they were shipped to Hong Kong. Uh, it's just amazing. Uh, you know, that was like uh, a $6,000 order right there. And that's that was back uh, in like 2001, 2002 if I remember correctly. Who would thunk it? That's just absolutely insane. And that's where I got uh, the collateral to uh, build up my machine shop. And that's where I got the experience uh, to build all these different stoves. Trial and error uh, and a huge quantity. Uh, those, were the good, those were good times, although they were very, very busy times. Because I was trying to work a job at the same time. But I worked the job. I retired from it. And that's another thing that... I wanted to straighten out. Uh, I did retire from Osram, Sylvania with 29.641 years. I didn't quite get my 30 years in because uh, the reason I retired was they moved to Mexico. So when they decided to move to Mexico, they offered me a chance to, for early retirement. I was 54 uh, and you had to be 55 to retire. So uh, it was for a year, a little less than a year, I collected my severance pay because I had uh, almost a year of severance pay and then the last couple of months I started working my business uh, and uh, unemployment had an entrepreneur program where you could uh, work your business, keep all the money you made from it and they actually still paid you unemployment benefits, $350 a week uh, and you didn't have to go out and look for a job, you could just work the business. So I worked that for a few months and then uh, at 50, age 55, I retired and started collecting my pension. Uh, so it worked out very well. So I did retire from Oslo, Pennsylvania, although it was kind of a, a, a one-year delayed retirement. And yeah, they did move to Mexico and promptly lost the business, but that's another story. So I'm Tenny from Mini Bull Design. Get out and hike, take a friend, enjoy the great outdoors, and more important than anything, try to enjoy your ultralight backpacking gear, Try to get out and, and use your backpacking gear. Try to have a really great day. Bye-bye.